This is exactly right. And welcome. This is my favorite murder. The mini sewed. We read you your shit back. To and you. you love it. Happy Golden Globes, Georgia. I thought <laughs> oh, we'd be thank topical. You. You're How welcome. did you know? Oh, <laughs> I could just tell in your I'm, eyes <laughs> that I'm what? Just that you're wearing this insane gown. Yeah. I, guys, I don't know where she got this thing, but it looks amazing. Listen, I'm stopping here on my way to the Golden Globes, <laughs> and then I'll win. It's a salmon sequined <laughs> millennial pink <laughs> chiffon gown. That America can't stop talking about. I need that. Yeah. Immediately. You're going to. You're and going I need to America run. to talk about me. Pereira. Yeah. Only America. <laughs> I need her to not stop talking about me. America, we heard what you said about yeah. Georgia and we love it. Love it. Millennial Pink is in. Girl, thank you for your support. <laughs> okay, read a story. Okay. <laughs> Let's get serious on Golden Globes night. <laughs> Can you tell we've the had our Golden imp- Globes wine? <laughs> <laughs> the most important night of the year. Oh. Karen's had her Golden Globe coffee. Oh. I've had my Golden Globe champagne. Steven's on all his Golden Globe Adderall. <laughs> We're going to do this show as quickly as possible. We also just opened a box from a, like a gift box that we had gotten from a while ago. And there's a ton of fucking chocolate in it. And yes. I've been eating it. Go. Yes. Here we go. Okay. This one goes out to you. Mounds and Almond Joy. <laughs> Not sponsored. The subject line of this is food court stabbing we're kicked off great hi karen georgia steven and pets my name is sarah and i'm 18 and i'm from australia (laughs) (laughs) that wasn't that was not go again i was gonna try to hello my name's sarah i'm 18 and i'm from australia there we go we're too far away i I can't do australia anymore around two years ago i was just louder and my voice went out (laughs) australia and i made a terrible face Around two years ago, I traveled to America as part of a school exchange program, and I lived with a host family in Seattle. My host family were amazing and showed me the best of Seattle and also kind of the worst. Ha ha. Oh. One day, my host sisters took me to Alderwood Mall to see the film La La Land, after which we then went shopping. Whilst in Urban Outfitters. <laughs> Whilst in Urban Outfitters is the name of my new play. Whilst in Urban Outfitters, people in the food court opposite us got up and ran in a sea of panic that's what you want to see right in a mall when you're fresh here from australia uh dropping trays of food and personal (gasps) belongings no my host sisters immediately thought there was a celebrity in the center (laughs) when my first thought was holy shit we're all gonna get shot yep as this is typically the main thing that we see on the news about america in australia you're not wrong that's what we see too that's what we see uh now weekly and we're used to it and it's a nightmare Uh uh-huh let's change that soon please yes uh, can't do it now. Okay. It's, it's Golden Globes Night. Golden Globes. It's the best night of the year. Please don't ruin it with gun control. No, let's ruin it with gun control. It's the best night of the year. <laughs> but what about the Obies? It's the it, only night Karen feels any joy <laughs> in the fucking life. Is the Globes. It's the Globies. Uh, we were then ushered into the back stock room of Urban Outfitters where half the people were having panic attacks. Jesus. The ones wearing leather hats. And the other half were completely nonchalant about the situation. They were pretending to be. They're on Xanax. All I was thinking (laughs) was, fuck, someone's going to bust down the door, shoot me, and La La Land is the last movie I will have ever seen. (laughs) You have to keep this in mind when you're going to pick your movie. Is this the last movie I've... What if it's the last one you'll ever see? Truly. (laughs) What's yours right now? (laughs) That That it should be? No, no, that it was. Oh, um, in the- in theaters, in a theater, yeah, it should be. So God. mine would be Mary Poppins. I don't mind oh. that. Did you see it? No, I don't see movies. Uh, I don't. I sound like an asshole. Genuinely and sincerely recommend Mary Poppins. It okay. was a feel good bust out hit. Amazing and great songs. Love it. And Emily Blunt, you cannot Darling. scratch her. She is perfection. Perfect. She's an amazing actress. She has a British accent. Yeah. She has a great face. She can have blonde hair. She can have brown hair. She can have red hair. <laughs> she was in that. Live Die Repeat movie with Tom Cruise. America loves her. And now America she's Ferreira. Fucking, America Ferreira. She is in the top five Best. of America Ferreira's favorite. Best friends. Can you tell I have a ton of, about a ton of coffee? Yeah. Okay, ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, all I was thinking, okay, that. Right. The nice employee looking after us all said to me, sweetie, you should call your parents. Okay, I'm going to sidebar this really quick. Uh, <laughs> you like that. 
No, no, no. I just, that's sweet. Yes, it is. And horrifying. Yeah. Um, if you're an adult, especially mm-hmm. woman to woman, this is my personal preference. So obviously take this with a grain of salt, okay. which no one seems to ever be able to do. <laughs> um, do not call other women your age, sweetie. Oh. Do not call women older than you, sweetie. No, don't it use is the word sweetie. So fucking it unnecessarily condescending it is. and rarely sincere. So if you're just trying to look for a way to kick off a sentence, look and listen work great. We will highly uh-huh. recommend that to you. Absolutely fucking totally. The word sweetie, just don't, just yeah. don't. How about baby girl? <laughs> How do? about what up, ho? Hey, baby girl. <laughs> hey, baby girl. Ho, oh, baby. Sweetie, I literally, uh, one of my old jobs, somebody was passing around a card for a girl that got a job somewhere else that was like a promotion. So they're like, we're sending around this card and you put in a Why? piece of Just advice. Just say goodbye. I know. I'm, but it was one of those things where we're all best friends. Put in a piece of advice for her to leave with. And I... Because this girl did it every single day. I wrote, stop calling people older than you, sweetie. And everybody had that reaction. I'm like, I thought we were giving advice. We need to. This is the kind of advice where if I met you and you did that, I would immediately. There would just be a spiritual line crossed through your name permanently. Don't do it. No, you're not. You're not going to get the higher ground because you're being condescending. No. I've been called it, and I'm immediately a cunt to whoever calls me that. Right? Immediately. Very similar. And I'm never fucking rude to, like, people in public. Right. But if you call me sweetie, I want to punch you in the face. It's a posture. Yeah. And if you are a sincere person and you are like, but I'm trying to convey love, go ahead and convey love and don't use condescending words. Use baby girl. Anything. (laughs) Well, so I'm trying to I'm trying to push my baby girl agenda on everyone. When did you come up with this agenda? The new year? This very moment in time. That's how good I am. Let's get baby girl going, everybody. Um, okay. So she said okay. to me, Sweeney, and also that's the only way you can say it. Sweetie, yeah. you should call your parents. Sweetie. As if to say you may not see them again, to which I replied, not going to happen there in Australia, and I do not want to give my mother a heart attack. Yeah. Hells yeah. After waiting an hour, the police came to let us out. I asked the woman next to me if she knew what had happened, to which she replied, uh, I don't know. Apparently, someone got stabbed. <gasps> Turns out someone did get stabbed whilst trying, whilst again, <laughs> whilst trying to break up a food fight. Or no, sorry. No, a fight, wait. A fight. I want to keep food fight. <laughs> sorry. Can we keep food fight in there? Sweetie, we can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> baby girl do not talk to me like that those are our new nicknames sweetie and baby girl everyone's like what they're the same why do, why is one upset and one not upset um steven is home <laughs> it's a fight between a food court employee and a disgruntled customer Uh-oh. who was apparently unsatisfied with the amount of cheese he had with his meal oh. luckily the man the food court employee was okay and the stabber was arrested stay sexy and don't get stabbed in the food court sarah holy shit yes yeah that was a I loved that. I mean, if you're going to get in a fight about anything, it should be cheese. And then not enough of it in the world. There's never enough on anything. Truly. There was a little while when I was deep, deep into my eating disorder Mm -hmm. and ordering. Oh my God. (laughs) Like the secret, the dirty secret of it. Mm -hmm. You should see how big Georgia's eyes just got. I'm so excited (laughs) to hear about your, the, the, like the details of your eating. Everyone's eating disorders like a snowflake. It's uh, right. It's It's just like a personal journey. What was your fucked up thing? Yeah. It's like vein, the veins in your body, but it's your own, the rivers of history inside of you. Absolutely. So it's me in the Burger King drive through. Cause to me, Burger King is the dirtiest of all the fast foods. Cause it's like, there's some, it's very chemically, it's big and sloppy. See, I think Jack in the Box is that. Really? Trash. Because you can go at like four in the morning. Yeah, it's trash food. Uh, Car- Carl's Jr. is the top, tippity top of the fucking classiest and I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> I love it so much. I want to cry. I love it so much. And then Jack in the Box is like the trash heap bottom. Okay, can you just tell me where Wendy's, Burger King, and McDonald's go in between? We're doing top five. Okay, so at the, from the top, Carl's Jr. underneath that, uh, Taco Bell. Okay. Yes. And then put in your own five, <laughs> baby girl. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we never did Wendy's as a kid, so it like doesn't really it's, come yeah. up on my radar. Okay, that's Burger fine. King actually is really good, I think. Yes. And then what else? Del Taco, Jack in the Box. Oh yeah. Okay. How about that? Yeah, that's a great top five. Oh, okay. Mine are. You know what's so well. It made me think of this because I had a friend, my friend Lydia, when we lived in Sacramento, went on a rant one day about how disgusting Wendy's was. And I was just like literally clutching Kurt. my breast like, what do you mean? I would Wendy's the same is- way if someone did it like Carl Shin. You're like, well, you right? don't know what you're talking, talking about. How dare you? Yeah. Where it's like, it's all garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's all garbage. It's all garbage. But to me, there was something especially, and maybe this is because in the worst of it, 
there was a Burger King drive through around the corner. Yeah. But to me, the most enjoyable, instead of classy, I would go like dirty, satisfying. Like, what do I really want? Yeah. If I'm going to do this yes. gross thing, let's go Which is go what for your it. eating disorder is about. It's not you being <laughs> fucking smart and order. Like, even at Burger King, you can order well and be fine. Yes. It's I'm going to Burger King, which I, means I'm going to blow everything up. Yes. So what, And I want to. And mom, you can't tell me what to right. do. I literally have the you can't tell me what to do argument in my head. <laughs> and my mother's been dead for almost three years. <laughs> Hi. I'm not laughing at your mom being dead. <laughs> you can't. The you argument can't. is <clears throat> okay, go ahead. So I would say Burger King because they do that thing where they pump out a fake barbecue smell. Mm -hmm. And I fall for that shit every time. So what would you order? Um, well, I would get a Whopper, but I would ask for extra cheese. That's and okay. To me, that's... But it's a step too far. Yeah. It's a step too far. You can you can get a shake. You can get a pie and put right. your pie inside your shake. So like a bur if you got a burger, a <laughs> shake and fries would be fine. But if you got a burger with extra cheese, that's like extra You're steps just that you don't being, need. That you're just being gross. I feel like I feel like I'd feel the same way if it was extra mayo. <laughs> <laughs> Which on <laughs> extra cheese I'm okay with. You are? Yeah. I think that you really like the cheese part. Love it. Then that's fine. It's what I'm there for. You're basically listen, you're getting a double cheeseburger without the extra meat. That's right. I'm saving <laughs> <laughs> saving on all those. Yeah, you're not getting the, the extra protein that you need. <laughs> <laughs> Western bacon cheeseburger. God damn, this is a satisfying conversation. <laughs> yes. Coke, fucking barbecue sauce. Yes. What? Okay, Stephen, you might not know this, but when we are on the road, every once in a while, we'll get wonderful, very healthy yeah. dinners to take home back to the hotel with us. But yeah. sometimes nothing's open or we can't. And we'll go to a fast food place. And that's this is my favorite joke. It's either you or Vince say it every time. You can always get a salad <laughs> because <laughs> it's like because we'll be like, oh, this is the worst. And yeah. we do all this fakey. We shouldn't do this. But anyway, we still get our burgers and like fries, especially at Arby's, though. Yes. Like. That I can't. Okay. What? This isn't an episode. This is a mini <laughs> We'll stop it at Arby's. Uh, Arby's, we apologize. Listen, if Arby's wants to do ads here, though, it's totally fine. Listen, I love a big beef and cheddar, and you cannot get fucking curly fries like that anywhere else. That's right. We have Horsey the beef. Horsey sauce. Horsey sauce. Horsey the sauce. <laughs> Well, that was fun. <laughs> side, We're each going to only do two bar. stories of stuff. No, that was the best. <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Go bye. All right. Remember, um, like a year ago, I, or maybe even more, I was yelling about locking your door no matter what, even when you were going to do the laundry down the hallway in your apartment. I would honestly say that's one of the first rants you ever did on this show. Really? I would say it's over two years ago. <laughs> well, I don't know anything about time. Because I remembered you doing that in your old apartment yeah steven's gonna fucking find it he's and already on a photo his of him like so because there was a guy in echo park and he got into an apartment building and a couple he just like started trying to open doors and there were some unlocked doors and they said that it was from like women who were going to do their laundry and even my dad to this day like when he stays at my apartment he alone he locks the door and he says because he listened to that episode yes okay well, it was episode 29 wow Girl. that was like a million years ago can you my hair was so much longer <laughs> well this is called 
didn't lock my front door while doing laundry slash Echo Park. Oh, shit. Is this ground zero? Uh Uh-huh. Hello, all. Caitlin here. Yep. I was one of the I was one of many women that got attacked from this creep. (gasps) Fortunately, I have a solid scream. Oh, fuck. Doing laundry one afternoon, I shuffled to the elevator of my roommate and I's three-story apartment complex to grab uh, my clothes out of the dryer. I didn't think twice about locking my doors. We live in a building with locked doors, uh, and you had to have a code to get in. Mm -hmm. As I was coming back, uh, I got to my door and noticed it was cracked open. Inside was a man I'd never seen before wearing a Virgin Mary shirt, Uh fucking fucker, (laughs) hiding behind my door. I honestly had thought it was my roommate at first coming home, but no. This crazy fucker put his hand over my mouth and pushed me up against my front door, shutting it. Oh, fuck. Somehow I managed to slip and fall to the floor, and all I could do was let out a blood-curdling scream loud enough to scare this asshole, and he ran out, and I slammed the door and locked it. Yes. Honey. Yes. You think, I always get so scared that I won't be able to scream when I need to. Yeah. That, like, nightmare Because you've thing. had that dream, yeah. Exactly. Yes. He had left a bag of stuff in my apartment, clothes, toothbrush, etc., and all caps, knocked on my front door, demanding me to give him his <laughs> shit back. <laughs> What the fuck? She says, yeah, okay, buddy. I hear him run from one end of the hall to the other, slamming his PCP-fueled body into my neighbor's door, breaking off a piece of it. This guy got in behind a family carrying in groceries. Oh, that's how he got into the apartment building. Yep. And the landlord watched him walk in. Yes. Oh, sure. shit. Because how many times does that, that happen to me? somebody's friend? My apartment building, like, I'm not going to be rude and be like, let me see your key. Right. You know, um, I should be rude. It was fucking scary. I had to go through this whole ordeal with the police, made a formal statement with the district attorney, identify him. He attacked probably 10 other women, and some were not as fortunate as I was. Oh, no. I I had even heard he had a knife on him. Makes me sick to think of what would have happened. I should have known better. My mom raised my siblings and I to be murderinos, not talking to strangers, code words, don't answer the front door when uh, she'd be in the shower, and most importantly, to scream. So you did know better. Yes, you you did. You fucking did one of those things your mom taught you, and you should be fucking proud of yourself. Yeah, do not, do not beat yourself up. No. Uh, I was literally shaking when I heard you guys talk about it on your most recent episode, Origins. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the last... Laughs and gasps, SSDGM, <laughs> and always lock your fucking door, Caitlin. Caitlin. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that turned out the way it did. Yeah. And it, also, even if, it, you know, it, the attack had happened, it's you're still not, uh, you still didn't, should not have known better. It's, it's not, not your, your fault. fault. That, it is yes. the crazy man's fault. Exactly. A hundred percent. Exactly. You didn't invite it. You didn't do anything wrong. I mean, that's a mistake we made early on because we were giving this advice of like, you got to do this and you got to do that. And we got reached out to by a victim's rights group that was just like, can you watch that language? Because when it happens to people, that's the first thing they do yeah. is beat themselves I up. I should have done this. I knew better. Yeah. And Which, it's like, no motherfucker. Yeah. The, the person that is entirely responsible and guilty is the person who perpetrated the crime. Exactly. The creep in the Virgin Mary shirt. It's so Have awful. Have you seen this photo? No. Okay, Stephen, can you? There's like a security photo of it. Bill. Put it on Instagram. Also, someone behind your door is very like basic nightmare. 100%. Okay. Um, um. Uh, uh, uh. The subject line of this is I know someone who was at Richard Speck's deathbed. Amazing. Hey, yo, Karen and Georgia and Steven. I went home for Christmas last week, which is in the Chicagoland area. While at breakfast one morning, my uncle's in-laws and I were talking about death over coffee, as one does at 7.30 a.m. naturally. I made a comment that I don't want to go out. Oh, I don't want to go out boringly. Yeah. Got it. Because uh, I feel I that do. every night. I don't want to go out boringly. I want to go out boringly. <laughs> Truly. Um, That, of course, led to this discussion of murder when my uncle's mother-in-law very casually said, I took care of Richard Speck when I was a nurse. Oh, my God. After a little bit of shocked blubbering on my part, she elaborated that she worked in ICU at Silver Cross in Joliet, Illinois, and they had the contract with Statesville Prison. She and another nurse got word of a prisoner who was having chest pain. They were told his name was El... um, El Bazaar Massa, but that's soon not that's not real at all. But soon after they heard through the grapevine that was actually Richard Speck and he uh, was allowed to choose a different name because he was afraid the nurses would hurt him if they knew who he was. Yeah, because he murdered a bunch of nurses. Yes, he did. Holy shit. He came in with two guards because he was so afraid of them. <sighs> she said, quote, 
creepy guy, very pale, lots of prison tats, skin was cold like a snake. <gasps> Ugh. Later that night, he had a heart attack. While they were trying to resuscitate him, she counted eight nurses in the room, as well as a, a lot of other personnel. They talked about who would play each of them in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, of course, said her character would be played by Molly Ringwald. Yes. But she also made the point to say that joking about this was bad behavior, but it didn't change their efforts in resuscitating him. Alas, the sucker died. Sayonara. Stay sexy and don't bite the hand that feeds you, Jasmine. God damn. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah. Don't bite the hand bite the hand that's gonna fucking take yeah. care of you that's on your like, deathbed, uh, uh, you uh, dick. Uh. There was a bunch of pictures like that when um a lot of the Black Lives Matter like protests started happening. Uh-huh. Have you ever seen those ones where it's like an ER a black ER doctor that's resuscitating a Nazi? Yes. I mean it is and it's just like and the Who's majority Who's going to come to your fucking aid, dude? Yeah. You're gonna be like, no, I'm I'm racist at that moment. Of course you're not. It's no, of course you're not. And also because in that moment you're truly you're the most fragile of your humanity, which you actually are all the time and you don't understand it's, that you do it, it's too scary to understand that yes so you're so you're raging right. like a child like a child with a temper tantrum and you're you're putting your violence on everybody right. else but suddenly you're hu- you're a human you're a human and someone else is human and it's going to help you a really really fucking smart human had who had to work twice yeah. as hard as everybody else to get where they were yeah. and they're not gonna fuck and it's their so shit kind up. that they don't give a shit what you were just screaming right well they probably do but they'll save it till they get home yeah I hope everyone's learned a lesson about my <laughs> uh, racial equality issues. Okay, I'm going to do one more. Do, do it, because I have one more, too, that's really short and Great, fun. let's do it. Okay, okay, this one's called, My Mom's Ex-Husband Tried to Blow Her Up. What? Hi, ladies, Stephen and animals. Hi. Hi. My mom was married for less than a year before she met my dad. I, it should have been no big deal, but in classic my mom fashion, she hid her first marriage from me and my sister <laughs> until my sister found her wedding photos while rummaging through a drawer in my grandma's house. I love that she uses the word rummaging and not snooping. Yeah. <laughs> I was just rummaging through my grandma's underwear drawer. You know how you like yeah. to do. I was looking for... I wanted a sachet of lavender, but instead <laughs> I found my mom's secret wedding photos. My sister threatened to tell me everything. She's a bitch like that. <laughs> this this has everything. <laughs> so my mom casually mentioned it to me one Christmas Eve when I was in high school. She literally said, by the way, I was married before your father. Let's not get into it. <laughs> that sounds like something my mom would say. Yes. And wouldn't answer any of my questions about it, thus cementing all of my many trust issues. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> the whole story, which finally emerged years later after a few dirty martinis. Oh, man. Always uh. does. Is that my mom left her first husband after discovering he was having sex with other men he found through personal ads. He was init- he uh, initially confessed to being gay and was okay with uh, them splitting up. But then he started to worry that his family would question his sexual orientation if he told them about the divorce. Then shit got weird. He started stalking my mom and threatening her, begging her to recon- uh, reconcile. Uh. She told him she would never out him to anyone, but that obviously she couldn't stay in the marriage. One day while driving down PCH after a scuba diving lesson in Long Beach, <laughs> as one does, as you do. <laughs> my mom's car suddenly caught fire and filled with smoke. She passed out from smoke inhalation and woke up on the side of the highway surrounded by firefighters. As she tells it, this also sounds like my mom. She was wearing a rather skimpy bikini <laughs> and the firefighters seemed very impressed with her darling figure. <laughs> And then she writes, this detail seems more important to her than the fact that she was almost incinerated. (laughs) (laughs) Darling figure Uh again. Also driving in your bikini. Yeah, that's right. You don't even throw a shirt on. It's the 70s. Yeah. Uh, It turned out her car had been rigged to ensure it would explode, but it didn't blow up as intended and just caught fire. She always suspected it was her ex as he was an engineer with lots of mechanical knowledge. But but not too much. (laughs) Not enough. (laughs) Thank God. Months later, he sent her a letter confessing to everything. I asked her why she didn't get a restraining order or go to the police at this point. And she simply replied, it was the 70s. I couldn't. I had my bikini on. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't. My darling figure wouldn't let me. (laughs) Would cause too many problems. That's right. After the car incident, my mom said her ex continued to send her letters and even followed her a few times and eventually stopped for some unknown reason. No big deal. (laughs) Moral of the story, the 70s were a crazy time and I'm immensely grateful my mom didn't get blown up or otherwise murdered and eventually got to have an amazing, loving marriage to my dad. Nice. Thanks so much for all that you do, ladies. You've helped me get through a brutal breakup and have made lots of lonely wine drenched 
drenched nights feel a little more fulfilling. Nice. Stay sexy and go to the police if your ex tries to blow up your car. <laughs> Shelly. <laughs> Good advice, Shelly. Shelly, you are not wrong. I can't stop picturing scuba lessons in Long Beach. If you've ever been to Long Beach, it's one of the more, it's slightly industrial and right off the coast because there's a dog beach that I take oh, my yeah. dogs to there sometimes, Rosie's Dog Beach. There's oil derricks yeah, yeah. or whatever you call them, like right off the coast. Yeah. It's not like you're in Maui. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we so used to, when we were driving home from to Orange County from LA, when we were little kids, we'd like, we'd stay up awake to see the fire. Like they had these like industrial things with like fires lit. And yes. It's like, well, it's fucking oil. <laughs> yeah, it's burning oil in the <laughs> yeah, ocean. And the kids were like, so pretty. Yay. That's our Disneyland. <laughs> All the hard starts. Okay. This last one for me is my dad gave a bank robber a ride. Hi, MFM fam. I'll get right to it. I grew up in a town just south of Boston in a middle class neighborhood. Uh, But when I was in fifth grade, we had a lockdown in school. This wasn't common in my area. So it's safe to say when we had a lockdown, there were all... Um, we were all pretty Armageddon about it. Yeah. <laughs> As it turned out, there had been a bank robbery across from my school and the thief had escaped on foot. Anyway, we got home from school that day and sat h- down for dinner. We told our parents about our exciting day and my dad's face got Irishman Woo! red. He asked, what bank and what time? Woo! And he escaped on foot. As it turned out, my dad had picked up a hitchhiker oh my God. <laughs> and dropped him off at that very <gasps> bank right around the time of the robbery. <laughs> He brushed it off as coincidence, but when watching the news later, as it turned out, sure enough, my dad had driven the robber to the bank. <laughs> he went on to rob. Thank God he didn't stick around to drive him home, <laughs> or oh perhaps my, my dad would be telling the story through a collect call from the DOC. Stay sexy and don't enable criminals, Lisa. What's the What's the other end of the getaway driver? The get get to their driver. The, That's what he was. <laughs> the carpooler. The carpool. The the carpool driver. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That's, that's so funny. Fucking hilarious. So good. And he's like, uh, uh, what time? No. Uh, uh, it was uh, a coincidence. Uh, yeah, we're not talking about it anymore. Everyone walks to the bank. Change the subject. <laughs> Slams his I'm fist bad. down on the dinner table. Give me another natty light. <laughs> you little shit. <laughs> yeah, little uh, shit. Send your emails to us at myfavoritemurder at gmail. Thank you to Steven for finding us so many great stories to tell. Those were great ones. That's a, this is a new year. It's 2019. Mm-hmm. There's a new bar that's been set with mm-hmm. these uh, hometowns. Please try to keep them as um, exciting and succinct uh, and provocative, and provocative and, and well and good grammar and great grammar, whilst, good grammar. Whilst whilst is good. Whilst is great. You know, fast food's great. Right. All of it. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. Stay sexy and don't get murdered. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Elvis. You want a cookie? <laughs>